All right, so I'm in vector.com. I'm building shapes. I just made this polygon shape. And to show you how we can modify anchors and points and shapes, you can see the path there. I'm going to lock the, the ellipse I made. And now I'm going to just modify the star. And I'm going to use the pen tool. See, let me select this path. There we go. So, <clears throat> you've already seen how in vector, ah, <laughs> how you can rotate a shape once you've made it and you can scale it using these transform boxes. How you can change its opacity, how you can change its border color or stroke, how you can change its fill color. I want to show you how you can modify the shape's anchor points, but it doesn't have a direct selection tool. This is me trying to figure out this new version. You have more shapes here, lots of custom shapes. So without that, let's just show you how you can kind of turn things off if you're not able to modify them easily. And then we're going to talk about the pin tool. We start with an anchor, we plot it, and then you go to your next, and then you can pull to get your curve. Pull to get your next curve. You can modify it later. Pull to get your next curve, and you can modify it later. Pull to get your next curve, and you can modify it later. If you're sick of curves, you can just do a, you can just do straights, like I showed in Illustrator. And we should be able to continue it as well. So this is what's called an open path. But I want to be able to close it so I can fill it. Ah, it's not letting it go for me. So this new version of Vector, you know, just changed this over these last couple weeks. is still a little buggy. But what makes it a Vector program <laughs> Ah. If you right click, you can get a lot of options. So I'm going to say cancel, but it won't let go of it. Oh my goodness. If I lock it. Yeah, very glitchy. So I'm not going to be using vector too much, but hopefully this will continue to improve. On Monday, it wouldn't even load because vector programs are kind of complicated. What makes them vector programs, and I can't even undo, is that you are able to export it. It's basically saving it as a format that is a vector format. I wanted you to see that vector exports is what's called a SVG, which is called a, a standard vector graphic. So if I export this, and I turn off my sketch, I turn on my other options, right? Then I can download it as an SVG. And that SVG can be opened in Illustrator and worked on in Illustrator. Notice that what this does not support is AI files or EPS files. So you would need to save as an SVG out of Illustrator to bring it into Vector. All right, so that's all for Vector for now.
let's go back to Illustrator and some of the tools that are helpful. So I was showing you how you can modify with the pen tool. Remember that we have resources for that. It is worth learning. I wish we had more time for it, but it's not an, an Illustrator only class. So what you do is you go to assignments and you will see with assignment four, this link to slides and another link to slides underneath it. So this first one, logo design and creation basics, which I've shown you before, and the digital honors presentation on logo design and vector.com. So in the final slides, this gives you some tips on using the pin tool, which is the, the hardest to get the handle of in Illustrator. And then some tips to play with getting more custom textures and shapes other than just really generic shapes in Illustrator. And then for vector.com, This shows how it works and hopefully how it will work again once it's less buggy. You can see how you can cut shapes out and all of those slides are available to you to help. But moving on to our demo and actually getting a logo. We're doing it in Illustrator. I'm not gonna use the shape tool that much except for like perfect perfect shapes like the perfect circle of the moon i'll probably cut out with the shape tool i'm not going to use the pen tool that much just because it's a a lot more work than my favorite tool which is the pencil tool and then the other tool i showed you for those of you who really like drawing digitally is the blob brush tool so i have that on its own layer here i'll unlock it the blob brush is right above the pencil and you can double click it and you can set how smooth it is, just like you can with the pencil tool. You can also set its size. So whereas the pencil tool just plots the outside of a path, the blob brush tool gives you a full shape as a blob that you're painting with. And we're going to use the blob brush a lot on our spot illustration assignment, our coloring book illustration because we're gonna use it to digitally ink. And as you add to it, it just keeps adding to your path. So this can be a good option for several of you too, especially if you really like illustrating and drawing digitally. So this is a lot like using a brush tool to ink in Photoshop with the added advantage of making, being able to make it a little bit smoother and less jittery. You know, it kind of smooths it out as you go. So all of those are options, but my favorite by far is the pencil tool. So I'm going to continue with that. And I'm going to use my tablet. And with the exception that it's not making a perfect circle here, I'm liking how this is going. So what can I use? I'll use the shortcut of the command tool to get back to the selection. And once I can see the anchor points, I can redraw them. And I can use it to connect. Now the problem is, as I'm making black shapes, I can't see my sketch anymore. So what I actually recommend is when you're using the pencil tool, switch it so that it's a stroke that's black. So you just flip it here. So you're seeing your outline stroke. And that way you can redraw and always see what shapes you're making. And then this is another tip. If I want to connect these, there isn't an easy way with the pencil tool to connect these paths, right? Because if I connect that path, then it will erase what it came from. You always have to start and stop on the same path. So I can do something like this. I can overlap the paths, but how do I connect them? 
Well, that's where the blob brush can be really helpful because it can also, if everything is the same, right? If everything's like a black fill-in, the blob brush can merge them together. And then I can flip it back. Empty out the fill. There we go. So just ways of kind of creatively using these tools together to get a smooth logo project. And you'll figure it out for how you like to work. Now, I just didn't end, remember with the pencil tool, the tricky part is always starting on the path and ending on the path. It's often good to go through an established anchor point first. And you can also modify those anchor points with the pen tool if that's easier. So instead of keep trying to mess with it, I can just move my anchor points a little bit. And try to fit the curve to what I want. And then there is also just using the pencil tool to smooth, like ultimate smooth. And that will reduce the number of anchor points. You know, keep it nice and smooth. Now the only drawback of smooth is sometimes it makes it hard to change directions quickly. But it can work. Okay, now a new shape. Start out here with the pencil tool. Curl in. Circle around, change directions quickly, and you always want to close your path by ending where you started. And that works pretty well. And remember, you're not a slave to your sketch. Now, this is something that comes up with digital inking a lot. Sometimes you're at a weird angle. So if you go to the magnifying glass tool, you'll see the rotate view tool. So if you need to, to get a certain curve, you can rotate your whole artboard to help with what you're trying to draw because there are certain angles that are much easier to uh, draw curves on than others. I can hold down spacebar and get the hand tool, move to where I want. Then I just keep using the pencil tool. To mimic my sketch. until it's nice and smooth and what I want. And what I love about it is I can always redo it. And we're just getting introduced to this, so yours doesn't need to be perfect. But it's nice to know you have the power. I can also use the pen tool just to delete some anchor points. But you have to be careful not to create new ones. So hold down minus and make it a delete anchor point tool. Hold down command to get the direct 
selection tool and now I've got the curve I want.